One conventional way to study points is to look at the five shoe points and to look at points as they are grouped on different anatomical structures or areas, from the tips of the fingers to the webs, the wrists, and then the elbows, or in the case of the feet, the ankles and the knees. This can be one way to start one's exploration, sort of a case study in looking at the points on territory that's relatively familiar. Link Shoe 2 describes the path of the five shoe points. It only associates an element with the Jing well points. The assumption is that the elements are then progressing all the way through the five points as we normally have them now. The naming of the phase in the Jing well, the tip point, expresses the idea of exchange in that for the yang channels, the Jing well point is a metal point metal being the turning of the yang towards yin, while for the yin meridians, the jing well points are wood points, meaning they symbolize the surging of yang from within yin. Thus, the jing well points suggest the opposite polarity to the um, yin or yang of the channel. The five shu points are described as associated with the organ first and foremost and only after they are listed are they associated with, say, arm tai yin. The expression is fei chu yu xiao xiang, lung comes out at lung 11, not tai yang comes out at lung 11. After listing all five points, it says shou tai yin jing ye, han tai yin channel, they are, these points are, of the han tai yin. The five shoe points are a progression of the channel from a well, a jing, to a xing, or a ying in Cantonese, which is not a stream as we often uh, say it, but rather a place where water rises and moves rapidly. So these points are suggesting a very dynamic movement, which matches the fact that the fingers or toes are highly sensitive and dynamic. So any stimulation here is bound to create a strong ripple. That is what happens at a well. If you dam the well, the whole river is affected. And the same again, where the rising or bubbling of a stream happens. The Yu or Shu point means to transport, to build a canoe to cross a river. Here, things are starting to move more solidly which in terms of the channel means moving inwards towards the torso, towards the organs. The Jing points are not river, literally. This is the same Jing as in Sutra or the um, Nei Jing, but it is treated as if it is the right hand side only. The, this is an underground river, meaning it is now moving towards the source, the organ. And the hair point is not a sea point. He means to unite. However, in the analogy with rivers, the river unites with the ocean. So in English, it becomes he sea point. But the implication of Ling Shu Tu is that this is a unification with what started to come out at the Jing Well point, meaning uniting with the organ. It's the organ, remember, that is being associated with the five shoe points. And of course, regardless of the flow of the channel in Ling Shu 10, the five shoe points progress in from the tips towards the to torso. So they're always representing moving inwards as a progression. The Jing well points tend to have names that suggest movement, exchange. We have a number of merchants, Lang 11 and Large Intestine 1, Xiao Shang and Shang Yang. Shang is a merchant, a discussion or a business. There's a constant exchange here. Stomach 45 is named Li Dui. Li is harsh or sharp, and Dui is to barter or to exchange or to cash something. We also have a number of Jingwell points that contain the character Chang to surge or a thoroughfare. These are Heart 9, Pericardium 9, and Sanja 1. Xiao Chang, the small Chang, Zhong Chang, the central Chang, and Guan Chang, 
the passage or a passage with an obstacle, a checkpoint, to Chong. Kidney Wan, Yang Chuan, this surging spring, also has the idea of bursting forth. Yang is to surge and has water and a bud bursting forth. We are then left with a number of points that appear to be quite yin, with bladder 67 named Zhe Yin reaching yin. Zhe is to arrive. It is a picture of a bird swooping down. So even though yin is in the name and we are arriving at yin, the idea of movement is still present here, even in a character that says to arrive. Gallbladder 44 is named Zhu Chao Yin, the leg opening yin, or the intelligence yin. The character Chao, an opening, an orifice, an aperture, is a hole with light that shines through it. So again, there is movement, there is light. And Spleen One is named Yin Bai, the hidden white. The yin in this character, to conceal, to hide, has a hill on the left, and to be careful or compassionate, composed of heart at the bottom, and an Asian character above that suggests that the hands are working. So this is hidden, but by white is the sun coming up, making everything appear white or bright, like in a dawn. So while there is a yin component, a secretive hiding quality, there is also an expansion in the white character. And liver one, Da Dun, is often translated as the big pile or the big hill. It also appears to be very yin by name. But Dun actually means to urge, and by implication sincere, as in to urge sincerity. When one adds the stone characters on the left, Dun becomes a stone block. And that is how Ellis translates it. However, the character used in Ling Shu Tu and in all standard texts since is not the one for a pile, even though both the pile and urge sound exactly the same. So what we have here again is something that pushes, that rises, that is dynamic and urging. And finally, we have small intestine one, Xiao Zi, the small marsh, which also appears to be very yin by name. But zi, a marsh, also means brilliant or radiant. It is composed of water and to keep watch. So we have some expansion, some yang in here too. So we see that the tips of the fingers or toes are names to suggest places of exchange, of dynamicism, of bursting out, and that is reflected in the names, even if at times it is a bit oblique. The webs of the fingers and the toes, where the yin points are located, do not seem to have that clear an idea or a theme. Or perhaps it is about a mixed thing, a place that is in between stages, a less defined place between the outside and the inside, as well as often in between the digits. We seem to have a border with Lung Ten, Yu Ji, the fish border, and an exchange, Heart Eight, Xiao Fu, the small exchange. And we have a large city, Spleen Two, Da Dun, perhaps suggesting an exchange that happens in cities. But we also have an inner courtyard, Stomach 44, Nei Ting. But courtyards are actually outside one's house, so they are actually exchanging. We also have two in-between spaces, Jian. We have large intestine 2, E Jian, the second space, and liver 2, Xing Jian, the moving space. And there is a door, Yan Men, San Jiao 2, the door of the liquids, and some connecting rooms that create a palace together, the palace of toil, Lao Gong, pericardium 8. Perhaps it is the three valleys here, that are the theme. A valley is something that's between mountains. Those are small intestine 2, Tian Gu, and bladder 66, Tong Gu, and kidney 2, Rang Gu. And also we have gallbladder 43, Xia Xi, the noble creek. So not so clear a picture here. Now 
we come to the wrists. The wrists suggest interaction, manipulation of the world, of yang, which depends on the articulation of the wrists. So here we see points named yang, large intestine 5, yang xi, the yang creek, san jiao 4, yang zhe, the yang pu, and small intestine 5, yang gu, the yang valley. These are the Jing River points, or in the case of San Zhao 4, it is a Yuan point. And on the Yin meridians, at the wrists, they rep are represented by the shoe points. So all of them suggest the shoe point's ability of moving things inwards after interacting or grasping with the hands. Obviously, to fully move things in, we will need to activate the elbows. On the yin side, the wrists have the shoe stream or the yuan points. And here the theme is greatness, tai. We have lang nine, tai yuan, the great depth or the great abyss, and da ling, the big mound. In the leg channels, the leg yin channels, the shoe stream points are named tai, great, as in spleen three, tai bai, the great white, liver three, tai chong, the Great Surge, and Kidney 3, Tai Xi, the Great Valley or the Great Creek. Tai, greatness, is a person extending themselves, as if one is to touch the ends of the universe, as if one's greatness is to become one with the world. So one lets go of the notion of self. The only point named Tai that is not a yin shoestring point is Stomach 23, Tai Yi, the Great Supreme again suggesting becoming something larger than oneself. The character Yu or Shu to transport is to build a canoe so as to cross the river. When we add the mouth radical to the left of it, we get Yu, though it is a different tone, and that means to explain, to understand, to know, often through an analogy. There is a suggestion here that the shoe points are points that allow us to communicate, to transport to the internal, and therefore to understand what is great. It suggests that to reach greatness, to transcend ourselves, we stand up in the world, move towards it, and then bring it in. The feet points are the springs on which we stand. The Great Surge, Liver 3, Tai Chang, the Great Rising or the Great White, Tai Bai, Spleen 3, and the Great Brook, Kidney 3, Tai Xi. The wrists allow us to take things in, and in that process we confront what is turbulent. Lang Nang, Tai Yuan. Yuan is an abyss, it is water contained and swirling, and also what we have buried, Pericardium 7, Da Ling the big mound. There are no common themes that seem to emerge in the names of the young channels, shoe or source points. However, there is a theme we can see with a shoe line on the foot. It will not include kidney three, which is at the ankle. This line is the line between the tarsal and metatarsal creating the arch across the width of the foot at the ball of the foot. So this is an area we stand on that is used for our posture. This area supports us and is essential for our upright posture. If we do not anchor this line across the foot, the cascading effect is lack of lifting in the thigh, lack of lift of the perineal floor, and the drop of the abdomen, the spine, and the organs. We start with spleen three. Tai Bai, the Great White. But we saw it also means great purity or great rising in a sense, because it's like the Great Dawn, a rising. If we do not anchor Spleen 3 into the ground, we will roll onto the outside of the foot and our whole upright posture will start to be distorted. The next point is Liver 3, Tai Chong, the Great Surge. Again, we need to anchor this place that is between the big and second toe, or else we shall find distortions in the rest of the body. On the yang side, we see a theme of consolidation, of bundling, but we for 
we get to it fully, we have to transition at stomach 43, Xian Gu, the sinking valley, a place of separation between the inside part and the outside part of this line of the foot. This is the center part of it. And gallbladder 41, Zhu Lin Qi, the foot facing the tears, has an interesting proposition in that it is about uprightness as well as something that is horizontal. I believe that this is also related to why it is considered to be opening the dye channel. Lin, to overlook, is composed of the character Wu, to recline, to lie down, or to prostrate. Why Lin, to cry, is made of water on the left, and to stand on the right. So what we have here is a mix of vertical, standing, and horizontal, lying down, crouching. And should we roll all our weight onto the bladder channel, we will also get distortion, and we will be unable to bundle up upwards. This is bladder 65, shugu, to bundle or to restrain the bones. If we move over too strongly onto the bladder side of the foot, the bone alignment will be floppy and collapsing at the rest of the body. All five points are needed to be active to ensure we are upright without any dropping, so to speak, or any drooping, so to speak, if you like. Interestingly enough, on the plantar side, where the action is actually more pronounced due to the contact with the ground, that is where Maruyama placed his Dwe points, which are points that affect the whole meridian, especially the parts on the legs, the chest, and the head. Unlike the wrists, at the ankles we have a different inference. The ankles do not serve so much to bring things we manipulated in, but rather to accentuate our gait and absorb our weight. Here we see mostly creeks and mounds, a place where most where people stand on. The ankle points are all Jing River points, with the exception of kidney three, Tai Xi, which is the Shu stream point. So they still are seen just as the wrist points, as places of moving inwards, except here it is moving the effect of the gait, not what has been captured by the hands, as they grab and take it in, but moving the gait upwards. At the ankles, we see two creeks, kidney three, tai xi, and stomach 41, jie xi. And we also see two mounds, spleen five, xiang qiu, and gallbladder 40, qiu xiu. The mounds are the result of the ankles supporting the weight. And we have bladder 60, kun lun, and liver four, Zhang Feng, the center conferring authority, representing passages, movements, towards the center, in the case of liver four, and Kunlun, representing the western paradise, which is the passage towards death and towards a new life. At the ankles, we have Xi, as in creek or valley points, and the character Xi actually contains the character Gu Valley on the right side while on the knees we have Chuan points, fountains, which is white or pure water. These Chuan points, these fountains, spleen 9, gallbladder 34, and liver 8, provide an upwardness, a spring to our gait, as opposed to the ankle points, which tend to have more weight-bearing. At the ankles, we have points that are named Chu, a mound. It is a person against another back to back on a surface, implying a support. At the knees, we have Ling, also a mount, but Ling is taller. It is a hill on the left, and on the right it means to be traversed. So it's taller than just a small mound like Chu. We can more easily provide a spring-like action from just below the knee than we can from the ankle joint. And we also see that the knee points are, in fact, just below the knee. Spleen 9 and gallbladder 34, yin ling chuan and yang ling chuan, have a unique quality here, as they hug the knee from below, offering a squeeze that can transmit up our gait. And liver 8 is a fountain or a spring too, chuan. As the channel 
unites back, it offers the fascia of the abdomen support. The ankles need to have a downward thrust so as to bounce up from against the ground. Hence we have Chu, the earthly mounds, and the Xi, the valleys, something that takes on the weight. The knees cannot be pushed down, as there is nothing to bounce up from here. If you push down into the knees, you basically lose your gait. The knees are meant to be lifted, sprung up, hence the fountains. And in the elbows, the hair points have two oceans, heart three, Xiao Hai, and small intestine eight, Xiao Hai, the small oceans. An ocean, Hai, is literally where all the water flows to. We also have ponds or marshes, Lang five, Chi Zi, the measured pond or the measured marsh, and pericardium three, Chi Zi, the bent marsh or pond. And we have a pool, large intestine 11, Chu Chi, the bent pool. Chi is where water is funneled through, a water basin. So when we look at the five Shu point names, we get a confirmation of what we would infer anatomically. Strong sensory interaction at the tips, manipulation and bringing things in at the wrists, further bringing things in at the elbows, support at the ankle, and support with more accentuated upwardness at the knees.